mark the gap between demand and supply across industries could have its own zip code. So while an economic expert tells us the Federal Reserve can't necessarily close that giant gap right now, increasing the interest rate is a common tactic they use to hopefully curb inflation. Typical traditional American dream is to own your own home. So, so it's, it's, it'll always maintain a value. But when too many people want to act on that dream, it can become a nightmare for housing hopefuls to buy something. We just had so much demand in the uh, last several months, especially, that, uh, uh, you know, there's, there's buyers that are finally able to buy, you know, whereas they were losing out on multiple, on uh, against uh, multiple offers on listings. That would As Phil Jordan, lead realtor of Jordan Apartment Guys, points out, the demand has been high and the supply of homes has been low, which drives prices up. The Federal Reserve, increasing the interest rate by 0.75 percent starting Thursday, aims to curb demand across industries, experiencing record inflation. And it seems like supply may be starting to meet demand, too. Jordan adds that just three months ago, there were 360 homes for sale in Bakersfield. As of Wednesday, there are 853. That's more than double the inventory. It's very common that in the spring, early summer, that's when most sellers want to put their homes on the market. Everything's starting to turn green. Winter's over, so you do have some seasonal increase. But the payment for a home is still going to be it's four, five, six hundred dollars more than it was for many buyers than it was four or five months ago. But uh, there's more to choose from, so the buyers are less sensitive to the interest rate are going to have more to choose from and, and maybe they could strike a little bit better deal. With more options and less in demand thanks to a higher inflation rate, you would think homes will become more affordable. But the economic chair of CSU Bakersfield says it's more complicated than that. Enter the yield on treasury bonds, where expectations play a huge role in those high mortgage rates. Given that early Jan, July, we already had the um, data coming out saying that the interest, I mean, the inflation is so high, the markets, specifically in the bond markets, they expected the Federal Reserve to increase the interest rates and they expected them to do it by three quarters of, you know, uh, 75 basis points, three quarters of a percentage. Had the Federal Reserve lowered or not increased it by as much, then you would have seen a lot more volatility of movements. But Hegde recognizes that owning a home is still one of the best investments that you can make, and there are some solutions out there besides waiting for the market to get better. An option is an adjustable rate mortgage, and we'll have more resources for prospective home buyers on our website, turnto23.com. Live in studio, Kristen Barton, 23 ABC News, connecting you. Kristen, thank you very much for that. And you may be wondering how the Fed raising interest rates actually helps the economy. So we took an in-depth look at information from the financial advising group known as Smart Asset and have an answer for you tonight. First, we must understand what inflation is. According to Smart Asset, inflation is the rate of increase in the price of goods and services over time. Inflation is caused when demand over time increases more quickly than supply. One factor of this inflation was the pandemic. During COVID, families received stimulus checks and had more money to spend and were buying more products, so prices went up to control demand. There was also the supply chain shortage as well. So to try and stop prices from continuing to climb and get the economy to cool down, the Federal Reserve will raise interest rates. When interest rates rise, it becomes more costly to borrow money. This action leaves people with less money to spend, so demand goes down with the hopes that prices go down eventually. 